call this finance committee meeting to order March 29, 2016, at 6 12 p.m. In attendance from the administration, we have Mayor Morley, uh, City of Auto Director Randy Flammer, Fire Chief Ted Whittington, Police Chief uh, Larry Wright, and we have the Assistant Director from Finance uh, from the Committee of Ken Gately and myself. Council is Laura to Pledge, Jason, Mike. Myers and Mike Zuck. Uh, Councilman Spot is absent and excused at this time. Myers. John, Myers. John Myers, sorry, John. My apologies. We only have one item on the agenda, and that is to discuss development on how to generate revenue and to reduce expenses. Uh, this was brought about by our two chiefs. So at this time, I'd like to turn this over to Chief Whittington. Can I go first? Let me. Oh, I figured I'd be this. Okay, well, we'll turn it over to Chief Wright then. I saw it was entitled, or included in there was reduced expenses. And I, I mean, we, we've gone over this for 10, 15 years, you know, the, the paper clip counting and uh, how much we pay for paper and things like that are well beyond where we're at now. Um, you know, Ted always classifies it as one major incident away or, you know, the, the recent analogy, you know, we, we started that we were juggling and now we're juggling walking on a ball. Now that ball's on a ship. I mean, sooner or later, you, you're not going to be able to keep everything in the air. Um, just got a resignation today from a dispatcher, so we're going to be going into dispatch hiring. Hiring for a victim advocate right now. Got one guy in training who's 27 years old. If I'm sure he's going to be taking other tests. So, you know, our, our last trainee that we laid off a couple of weeks after getting out of training, he is now the benefit of Willoughby. So, you know, he goes to one of the more affluent cities in the county, and after a couple of weeks of um, having him on the road, they're <coughs> saving money over there as we're spending it to find more more guys. Um, the pools, I think, in all safety forces have been reduced. You know, the, the qualifications are higher that you have to have the academy. Recent public events, I, maybe that shine people away from the job in general, but we're, we're maybe a contract away from being a stepping stone department where guys only come to get their commission and keep taking other tests until they get another job. Um, the last couple contracts, the last one specifically, was moving up the to a longevity and um, take all the time off. You know that we've we've gotten through all that, but I that was kind of the last arrow in the quiver. I I have no idea what the city at this time could offer the employees and. For, for them to go, you know, into a, a full decade with no raises is, you know, I, I can't, we could always say it's not about the money, and, and to a degree it isn't, but, you know, when, when everyone around you is getting raises without, without conflict, they're getting, you know, and they're already far ahead to begin with, it, it, it's a tough thing for me to not, if people are asking me for a direction, you know, I have an obligation to run the department. I also have an obligation to tell the truth. And if I don't see anything better on the horizon to tell someone, yeah, you know, they got that, but we got this here, those, those things on our side of the ledger decreased significantly. Um, and, and that's just on the employee front. We have the, you know, all the building issues and things like that for us to continue without some, whether the, the light at the end of the tunnel is, is reachable or not, to not try to figure out where that light's at and provide some type of direction of where we're going to try to head, I, I just can't see us keeping people motivated to, to not be seeking employment elsewhere. You know, to replace this dispatch is going to be Difficult. I got another dispatcher leaving in less than a year. I got at least one guy leaving this year, maybe two, and maybe up to a third within the next three or four years. So, 
again, it's getting new guys in, qualified, trained, and then trying to keep those guys. The majority of, I mean, our median age is probably 44, 45 years old. Police, you can't, you just can't go like from a finance department or a service department and carry everything over. The, um, so our guys 35 and older are pretty much, that's where they're going to be at. But the guy, you know, I don't want to hire guys just because they're 34 or 35 and might not have an opportunity to get a job somewhere else, but it's got to be something we think about in the future if this is going to continue the direction. I mean, we're never going to catch up. That's, that's obvious. And, you know, I, I, don't, I don't look at my paycheck and, and scream and moan, but, that, again, when everyone else is, is gaining and, you know, our, our, there's just nothing, nothing positive to even put some blinders on towards the horizon because we're not setting the horizon. Chief, how many um, police officers did the uh, police department have? It, it, it's, what, what, how many? How many should it have to to run efficiently? And well, better than it is right now. Yeah. Well, what would be your ideal? Where should, Where do you think we should be? The safety standards. I think standards we should probably should... be at thirty, thirty-one. And how many do you have? We have twenty-two. Twenty-two. Okay. And our high was thirty-eight. I knew there were more than thirty-one yeah. at one point. So. You know, the FBI usually sets at one and. One and a half people, one and a half officers per thousand. So if you could, you would love to add nine police officers today, if you could. Oh yeah. That'd be all right. You know, I'd, I'd like to have the problem of trying to get new candidates and stuff like that, because again, that's a lot of hard work. But with the, the horizon being um, a little rosier, mm -hmm. but even if you know, just to keep replacing the guys that we're going to be leaving, and that's, you know, barring anything, any major injury or so, or some abrupt retirement or um, anything like that, and every day you're trying to hire, you got, you, you're got taking time to do an interview board, so you got three or four people not doing their job that day. I mean, it's just, a, you know, cyclical how that all is going to impact the everyday activity. So, again, me and the fire chief in the past have gone out and done um, a number of different things. We have some different ideas, on, mostly based on what it is decided on, on that direction. You know, I, I have no problem putting in extra time to talk to more people and get more information out there. You know, whether it works or not, I at least got to know I made the effort here to try to get this group focused in one direction and then once that direction set to make sure that I do my part to you know get the people the information they need I, it, it seems like we do change people's minds when they do have information it, a lot of people say they don't want to pay taxes they don't want this they don't want that but I know when they do want it fire chief knows when they do want it you know, the, and you try to have a simple conversation with somebody about why you're not doing a lockout and, you know, they're yelling and screaming that, you know, don't tell me that. Well, you know, every, every decision we make has a consequence and I, you know, other than the leaves not being picked up, lockouts and maybe uh, fire alarm installs, which I know you still do, you know, that don't know how you even make that impact you know, from the from the safety forces service other than cutting out those you know I guess we could stop there and things like that but a lot of those are financed separately anyway so that, that would well there's a lot of things that the police department has gone without too I mean as far as your cruisers and updating your electronic systems in there and um, those are all things that were aware what are general costs are for those as far as um, I think the repair to the bay was like six. Yeah, that's a fifty thousand dollar thing right yeah. there. I mean, our roof has issues, I and mean, we have a number of different things that you know we're trying to keep the rain somewhat updated, and you know just to do the normal course of business, let alone you know, any type of strategic <coughs> planning to deal with 
what we're dealing with every day, you know, mostly heroin related, but whether it's thefts, burglaries, or, you know, just the drug use in general. And right now we're just pretty much a pure reactionary force. You know, the fortunately we still have some really good core guys that are still doing some proactive work, but I mean, I, I just I wonder how long we can continue doing that and without having a, a, a negative effect on them, too. Mr. Zerf. Thank you. Um, Ms. Chief, uh, like, uh, do you happen to know the for comparison purposes, the number of police that are that work in Lowick, Lodi, Wickliffe, uh, in, the, in those. Uh, Lowick, I think, has 24. Wickliffe, last check, had 30. Willoughby has about 44. Thank you. And Willoughick has a I'm so sorry. I've been really Mr. bad Blood. tonight. Um, Willowick has a population of about twelve or 13,000, yeah. so about 8,000 less than Willoughby. Yeah. Willoughby, I think, is more... Um, Willoughby has about 20,000 people, and I mean, they're going up a little bit, but, mm -hmm. you know, you figure Willoughby and Willowick are about two officers per thousand. Okay. Chief Whittington. Thank you, sir. <coughs> so, or, excuse me, just one thing. Okay. Mayor, okay. Okay. For you. Just one thing that that I'll add that I know the chiefs are concerned and, and other people. The person that just left the building department went to another city and started out $8,000 at entry for the same job she's doing here. Uh, Nick told me today that there's rumors of two service guys maybe leaving, and so they're all worried about everyone just leaving. And we, one, we don't have any, and one, we can't fill any jobs off. That's all I'll add on that and then let the chief go and we'll go from there. So uh, yeah, obviously, we, 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 we between the three of us, including the mayor and, and Larry, we, we meet quite regularly to, to make sure that we're trying to get on the same page. You know, the, the one big change that's happened in the city that doesn't get recognized, and I'm just not saying this, is, is the work that the mayor's done with the industrial parks. You know, if you go down to our industrial parks, it's probably the healthiest they've been in a long, 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 long time. And they bring in money to the city, you know, and I can sit here and reiterate some of the things that the chief spoke about regarding the department. But the one thing that I really have seen and, and, and probably concerns me more than anything is I think there's a breakover point for this city as a whole. You know, take me out of it, take the police department, you know, individually. I think as a whole we have a, there's a breakover point. And, I, again, I think that between, you know, the buildings um, and the personnel and the equipment that we have, you know, the mayor says it all the time, I mean, to re restore services to, to any level that he probably wants it done, you'd have to pass uh, a, a monumental type of a levy in the city. And again, I think that we all know that that's probably not a probable thing to do. But as we get more into this as, you know, we're talking now, uh, you know, a decade of, of moving backwards as a whole, and then we, we push aside the, 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 the needs of, of not only the departments, but probably the residents to some level. I, 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 I fear that, that there's a point of no return for that. And then what does that mean for us as a whole, as a city? I mean, do, do, do we start shutting things down? I mean, again, I think that the analogy that the chief put out as far as the juggling act, I mean, that, 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 that really truly is, you know, a, a dicey thing when you're talking about, you know, public safety. I, and I've been very open with all of you to say that there's days where um, I respond to, to an incident by myself in, in a vehicle. And quite honest with you, I think that I put myself, you know, I, I'm willing to put my, my, my life on the line for everybody in this, in this building and in this city. I, I took an oath, and I, and I stand behind that oath every single day. But I also believe that the oath also allows me to make sure that at some level that, you know, I'm given the equipment and the tools to be able to... to, to to operate in, in, a, in a safe environment. So I think that, you know, when we talked, and, and I know we've met with, with you guys, and us, especially the new members, you, you are get put in a horrible, horrible position because we're at this point. I, I, I really have genuine concerns about what, where we're, you know, what, where's the breakover point? And I, maybe that's, you know, if there's anything we leave to get in this meeting together, because a lot of the things that I feel I, you guys are already well aware of, the things that I need next door, you know, again, I'm facing losing three more guys here, you know, in June of 17 because the grant runs out. 
And I, so, but I think maybe when we leave here, we, I think we really need to start reflecting on where we are as a whole and where we're going. And is there a point of no return for us? And because I think that there is, I really do. I believe in my heart that there is that point of no return when, you know, any efforts that we try to make, you know, would not be. You can't go to the residents and expect, you know, them to pass the levies to get us back to where we were in, in, in the day where we were operating, you know, efficiently. Um, so that's my big concern, and I think when I talked to the chief, I said that maybe that's the point. Because, I, I, again, I can tell you ad nauseum the things that, that concern me about operating in the fire department. And, again, you know, we're running short. You know, when we, we're, we're seeing an increase in, you know, of, 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 of issues that really dictate that we have a lot of people. You know, we're not going to one house on fire now. We're going to two houses on fire and three cars in a driving fire. And, again, luckily... You know, we had everybody in the station, but there's at least twice a day in this city where the residents don't have police and fire protection. When both of those ambulances are gone and there's nobody left in the fire station, that means that the residents of the city and the business owners of the city don't have police uh, or EMS protection. And that, that should be a genuine concern for all of us to say, well, what are we going to do? So, again, I, I'm at that point now. I, I, I'm also with the chief. I would put myself out there. I would, you know, we've worked levies in the past. We've went out. We've, we've sat at businesses and dinners, and we've, we've asked people to, to engage us. We've walked door to door. We've talked to people, and I'm willing to continue to do that, but I think that as a whole, you know, maybe we need to start finding a way. And, again, and maybe as a council, you're not at that point, and if that's the case, I'm okay with that. But I just need to be able to take it back to my people to say, you know, council's still trying to work to figure out what, what, what direction we're going in, because I think that that's an acceptable answer. Um, but I think that we're, you know, between the, the chief and myself, we're really looking for some direction. Again, you know, do you want me to still continue to rebuild the motors on the 12-year-old ambulances? I mean, if that's what you want me to do and that's the expectations, I'll continue to do that. But again, understand that that's a finite thing, too. And again, do we wait to the ambulances on the road and it breaks down and then we have to deal with that as a, as a community because again that's where we're at with some of this stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm here with you, you know, to you to know that I support every one of you here. I can't say enough of how much work that the mayor puts in to try to, is, to, try to make this city better. I vowed to, you know, to, to have his back and to continue to work hard for him. I just think that you know, again for me it's just I'm looking for some more guidance on what we're, like, what we're trying to get done here. I think, and we discuss this in staff all the time, um, I've talked to the chiefs, I've talked to the other directors of some of their perspectives. I think everyone knows where my, where my stance is on reducing the, rest pro reducing the tax credit. That being said, I mean, I think I've had some residents call, they ask why we didn't put something on the ballot this, for the primary, and what I've told them was we had four new council people. The old council people would have been the one to put it on the ballot. And this is nothing that I've talked to you guys each individually on this. And if we would have went to the ballot and one of them or two of them or three of them said, hey, I didn't agree with that or I didn't do this, it's just another failing levy. Uh, and I've also said this, the levies that passed in November, both the school and Lakeland failed within our city. On a whole, they have passed because the other cities carried them. But again, the Little Beast Lake schools lost 7 out of 12 precincts. The... Uh, Lakeland, I don't know how many, it was, but it was lost. We were like only one of three cities where Lakeland failed. So we sit back and say, as a group, where do our residents, I've asked, especially the newer ones, where do our residents want to go? What have you heard when you were campaigning? Uh, again, like today, the yell ats today between the, the, the girls in finding or in building getting yelled at because no one's there to answer the phone. Dave's on vacation. There is no backup. Uh, the person that's doing our inspections tonight, <coughs> doesn't work here anymore, but we have, Dave has a backup when he's gone, so she's doing this this evening. When one of the girls are absent, or when I'm not in my office and someone's screaming on the phone, well, how come no one's picking up your phone? Well, I don't sit by the phone all day. If someone's sick or absent, we don't have. We have no backup. I'm in agreement with them. We have no, we are doing disservice. We are inefficient. Not because we want to be inefficient, because we don't have the bodies to be efficient. You know, I, I mean, the girls in the building take a beat up. The service secretary takes a beat up every day because you, you can't make the phone calls. We don't have the extra person. But 
when I talk to the residents, I never bring up anything about the levees. I say we, the bodies that we have are here and we're doing what we can do. Not, hey, we should pass this or hey, you know what, I have not given up that a levy can't pass here. I just am, I mean, I'll go back to 2013. We couldn't pass $1.26 a month, let alone what we do need. You look at this, we'll use 10 employees. <clears throat> Let's do an average of 70 with benefits. That's $700,000 for 10. Even with 10 employees, well, we won't be to when people go, well, why can't we be Willoughby? Why can't we be Willoughby? You know, we will never get to that. I mean, we talked about this. I've said to get to the employees we need to call to get back, to have recreation, to have everything else, we're talking 30 employees. That's $2.1 million at $70,000. And, and then there's other things that go to cost with that. I mean, we're scraping to find him cars. So I think from, and I won't speak for them, I think what they're looking for direction from everyone is, do we want to try another levy? Do we want to try another tax increase? Do we want to do reciprocity? I think that's what they're asking tonight. I won't speak for them, but in a nutshell, that's basically what it is. If the employees want it, I mean, we have negotiations coming up at the end of the year. We'll start in September. And again, everyone probably knows we're going to go in there with zeros and Again, we'll be up to 13 years without a raise, and everyone and their brother's going to be bail off. You know, if I may interject real quick, because I spoke at it, when I spoke at, in budget hearings, I did reference negotiations, and I want to make it clear that as an employee that has two teenage girls that are, are you know, getting closer to graduation, you know, I, I want to make it clear that I'm also in line and, and we'd be supporting them and looking for a raise. So I don't want to throw to make it a union issue that we have negotiation as a non-union employee. And as someone that you guys agree to give me raises, I'm also looking for a raise. And I, again, I just want to make sure that that's clear. I don't want to make, if the residents are looking to say, well, it's just a union issue, I want to make clear from the fire side that it's not a union issue, it's an employee issue. I, again, I'm trying to raise a family, I'm trying to, you know, I have things in, you know, again, you know, this, the this, this day to day stuff that, you know, catches up. Now, again, I'm very, I'm honored and privileged to work in the city, I'm not complaining. But at the same time, I think that I, I, I have those looks. So I, I wanted to make sure that I was on record by saying that it's not a union issue <coughs> as much as it is an employee issue, at least for me. Mr. Clymer? I was just going to say, I wanted to make sure everybody understood the process for the levies and the reciprocity. And I don't even know if we need to start the basics with all that stuff. I think or that's not. a good, I mean, good idea. You know, with the, with the tax levies and tax increase, I mean, those all have to go out for a vote of the people. The only thing that you have control on is rolling back the reciprocity, which is giving the people that work that pay income tax elsewhere a credit for what we pay, what they pay elsewhere. At this point, they get they're still at one hundred percent. They get one hundred percent of whatever they pay elsewhere. So the city gets no income tax if they're paying elsewhere. So all the people that work in Progressive, right? All the people that work in Progressive pay in Mayfield. Um, the city gets no benefit of their income tax because we give them one hundred percent credit. On I think we're in the minority as far as giving 100%. I mean, a lot of cities give some type of credit to be neighborly, but I think we're in the, in the minority. But that's the one thing you have control over that you could make the decision as elected officials that we're going to roll back that reciprocity and, and not need a vote of the people. And unfortunately, that's where tough decisions by elected officials really Mr. Road. I was just saying, and reciprocity is currently 2%. So we don't have to roll back a whole amount. We could do 25, 50, 1 percent. We could do 2 percent. A lot of communities don't give any credit whatsoever. So it's 100 percent of the 2 percent. Let me again remind <coughs> everybody, exactly please raise your hand and be recognized by the chair before you begin to speak. Please. I'm sorry. I was clarifying. Earlier. It's 100 percent. They pay 2 percent income tax. We give 100 percent credit. So right. you can roll back portions of that and give them 25 percent credit, whatever you might want to do. Mr. Hayflin. Because you don't need to vote the people to do that. That's the one thing you have control over. Mr. Clymer, I <clears throat> one of the questions I had in regards to the reciprocity, say we did a, a reduction and we generated another million dollars, um, could, and I know it would have to go through the general fund, could council, ha, could that money be put into, say, a sub-account in the general fund and only certain percentages would be earmarked that they could only be used for, say, safety forces, <clears throat> capital improvements, Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Can we pass an ordinance? 
Because I know the one thing I always hear is the big thing that people want to say is that first thing is when we get money, it's going for the stadium debt. And that's one of the biggest things that why nothing gets passed around here is because they all think all the money that's going to come in is going right to the stadium. Well, we can do anything, but it's a fiction in a sense because it's an ordinance that council can change at any one point in time. Um, so they really have nothing but your word, but that's a difficult position to put you guys in because not, not any one of you speaks for a council, so should the council configuration change at one point in time, it's all out the window because it's just an ordinance. You know, so I know that's tough messaging sometimes for, for real complicated issues that people aren't expected to know, but us in this room are. You know, that's the tough part. So yeah, you can earmark everything you want, but let's let's be sincere that it is a certain degree of fiction. <clears throat> it's different than say development impact fees that a, that a developer pays because that by ordinance and they pay it, it has to go. And there's constitutional issues because it's a taking and blah blah blah. That's different. Mr. Fletch. Do we have a way of knowing what we would collect every year if we didn't change reciprocity versus what the impact would be if we changed it? I don't know, know that, and it's cool. There is a well, I mean, I know that, but how would we know if it's actually collected? Like, how would we know? Would, would, just be, would it be money coming from people who work outside of Eastlake? Would we be able to earmark that and say, this is, well, these are yeah. funds generated from reciprocity, and we would know because... It would be coming from the residents that live in Eastlake but work outside because they're going to lose the, the full 100 percent credit. And also, so it would be coming from the residents of Eastlake. Example. And also <coughs> from people who. Let me go ahead. Fair. Example: My Fair. wife works in Solon. Right. She pays two percent to Solon. Solon doesn't say, "Hey, let's send that money back to Eastlake." If you reduce the credit, then if if you went to we're given only 1% credit, she'd pay 1% to the city of Eastlake through filing through RITA every quarter. I mean, when I worked for Bainbridge Township, they didn't pull any money out because they didn't have anything. So I had to set up 2% through payroll to get deducted. So those are the things that are out there. So that the people that would be affected are the people that work outside of the city. And we have a way of accounting for that fresh money if we were to change yeah, how it would come in, we'd be able to identify that. Yeah, that would, if I'm reading, yeah, and if I'm reading Mike, so this was this one that Slocum did when you guys had it last night. I'm looking at page four, if I understand it correctly. We did an analysis there. It's unnumbered page four, but I think this is an analysis on keeping our income tax at 2%, reducing the reciprocity credit, and that, that left side column, I think, is variable income tax rates at different neighboring cities. I think what he's trying to show us at the bottom is the net gain to the city based on rollback. If I'm reading it correctly, it's been a while. I think that's right, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so 100% rollback is bringing us two million, if I'm understanding it correctly. Two point six. Yeah. Whereas a 25% rollback in reciprocity is six hundred seven. You know, I, I was really engaged. This, when the last level we put out with the income tax increase, I was really, really encouraged when we were going through the process. We went through the town halls, and, and there were several reasons why I thought that we had a chance with the income tax increase, you know, as a vote to the public. Because first and foremost, the, the, the people that would have been exempted from that would have been the people that we that, 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 that shouldn't maybe should have an argument to say that they can't afford income tax increases. So that would have been people on Social Security benefits or disability benefits, things along those lines. Uh, additionally, and if I remember the numbers correctly, about 60% of the money generated from an increase would have been generated from people that actually work in the city, mm -hmm. however, don't live in the city. And as we went through that and we were doing the education and we were, we were really trying to hit home the fact that you know, the, the monies that you pay right now for taxes only less than 10% come back to the city, and that hasn't changed since 1982. I really thought that the information that we had out there was really going to be the way to really re reel this back in for us. So, obviously, it, it goes down. So, at, subsequent after that, 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 that failure of the levy, we made some internal. When we went down to five, um, again, again, one of the things I implemented right away was all the transports from all of our residents would strictly be through Lake Health, Lake West and Willoughby. 
And the reason for that is, is because I couldn't justify taking almost half of my on-duty people to a different hospital when I was passing Lake Health. So that generated, obviously, some calls. And so the one call I got from a lady, I, she basically said, you know, my mom really needed to go to Euclid. That's where the cardiologist is. Very sympathetic and empathetic to that. I understand because there's more cost now going to be incurred to that family when they have to do a facility-to-facility -facility transport. And she said, and we started talking a little bit, and I tried to explain. And, again, according to her, her, her mother's understanding was that the income tax increase was really going to affect her mom in a negative impact, even though she wasn't working. And after some discussion, I actually sent her to Mr. Slocum, and Mr. Slocum was able to clear it up. So I think that there was some inf misinformation, and I had my opinion on that, um, as far as how that misinformation got put out there. Uh, I just, I really wonder in my heart if we made a concerted effort to really make sure we try to find a way to campaign and educate Again, I'm just, I, I can't imagine that the average person, knowing what's at stake now, um, wouldn't be at least entertaining to, to that thought, especially if we're generating more than 50% of the money that would, would not affect our residents, but would definitely you know, impact them by restoring or at least maintaining a service level uh, that, that's, that's reasonable. So again, if we're looking and we're, we're almost brainstorming, uh, again, I want to be part of the process. I really think that the income tax increase might be another thought to look at to see maybe do we approach it from a different way. I know that Kirtland and their last levies actually hired a third party through donations. And I know that that's a difficult thing to do. But the way that these, 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 these systems work is, is again, there's some, I think that that was misled what they try to do. They actually are part of an education process. They start calling people direct and saying, this is so-and-so, we're looking at this levy in Kirtland, it's based on this, this is what we're looking for, this is how much it's going to cost, this is where the money goes, and then it really puts, starts a process of, of educating everybody. So when the end of the day, you know, again, and I'm not sure if that's the answer either, but I just think that when we went through this whole last process, we had these town halls, we, we spent time with people, we had one-on-one -on -one time with people, and we really got to see, and when you start telling people, you know, you're only paying 300 bucks to the city, and, you know, we're reducing workforces, and, you know, there's a chance that we're going to have problems here, and blah, blah, blah. And then when we say to you, is, uh, you know, most of the money generated from an income tax increase is not going to be from, from the people that live here. Again, I, I, would, I would have probably naive bet, bet money on it that we would have passed that one, just because we, we had preserved that, those, those groups. But okay. again, just to set the record straight here, Chief Whittington touched on 9.6% of the taxes residents paying 9.6 goes to the city. That is on a property tax. Property tax. Income tax and property <coughs> tax are two different things. Maybe we could have finance touch on that real quick and explain the difference. Um, the property tax is what you pay on the value of your home and your land. And even if you don't have any income, taxable income, like people that are retired or on Social Security, um, you still have to pay property taxes. So to increase property taxes would require a vote um, from the citizens or the residents of East Lake, and it would affect everybody that lives or owns property in East Lake. Including seniors. Well, it doesn't. It doesn't affect renters. No, it doesn't affect renters. It it affects the property owners. So the people that actually own the property would absorb the property tax increase. Um, again, seniors and people, retirement, social security age as well. Now, if you were to increase the income tax rate, you would affect generally everyone that works in East Lake. So if you have a bulk of your people coming in from different cities into East Lake, then they're the ones that are going to absorb the increase in taxes, are the people that work in East Lake, whether you live there or not. And then if you adjust the reciprocity, then you are affecting the residents that live in East Lake but work outside. And seniors, and low income seniors would have we could avoid they avoid the they avoid the impact of the tax because they're not paying it. Mr. Hayfoot. Now if we you know, like when we went with the two point five and that failed, but if it would have passed and when we see all these other communities they're having problems as well. So if Cleveland does go and pass close to 2.5 and Wycliffe goes to 2.5, then we're back to square one again. Mm -hmm. 
with reciprocity. With reciprocity. With reciprocity. I, no, I'm saying, yeah, what, if we didn't have, if we had the 100% reciprocity, like we currently have, as soon as they go to their 2.5, we're back to square one. That's why you'll see a lot of communities will have a reduction in the reciprocity credit and a higher tax rate. Yeah. Chief Whittington, and we'll Mr. Zern. And I think it was back something that came out of the town hall meetings too, and I think Kathy can you know verify this. You know, because there was concern if we did an income tax increase, it would push businesses out. It's not going to cost the business owner any additional money with the increase. The people that work for him would pay more taxes. So the business owner, the guy that owns the business here, in essence, doesn't get affected. You know, by his at the end of the day, it's just that when he draws up his employee's paycheck, you know, he takes more out of that to be sent to the city. So I think that that was another aspect that there was concern when we worked with the mayor to say, you know, we we got you know, because one thing was we're going to have pushback from business owners that doesn't affect those business owners on an income tax increase. Mr. Zer. Um, I just wanted to uh, ask if this um, third page of the uh, of the City of Eastlake Town Hall meeting uh, was still accurate with the um, municipalities with less than 100% reciprocity. Um, from my understanding of this, we are already at the highest income tax rate for the city. And if you discount the three municipalities that have 1% tax rate, there's only one if you factor in reciprocity uh, that is higher than us in the whole in the whole county, in Lake County, not, not Cuyahoga County. I think that's a different animal altogether. So my, my question is, there's only one, it's Willowick is the only city that actually has a higher income tax rate considering where you work inside or outside of the city than what than, than Eastlake right now. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's accurate. I don't know if Mike was reporting cities with hundred percent because it's only there's obviously more than four cities in well, I think these are the ones common. with so I, I would I'm not sure. Yeah. I think that these are the ones with the reciprocity that is less than at hundred percent, which is where he's like is. So they have less than our city. So this isn't city. showing us the, the actual tax rates across the county. Mm -hmm. No. I think it, I think he's trying to put two together on one chart somehow. You know what I'm saying? Let me go with the mayor and then we'll go with Mr. Gates. I mean, then I got chief. The only surrounding oh, there are other surrounding <coughs> cities, Willie Hills. Um, they charge an extra point five for that. Like if I lived in Willoughby Hills and I worked in East Lake and they took two percent out. I still have to pay Willoughby Hills 0.5. So they're the only one besides Willoughby uh, that does that. Or they take it out, I'm sorry. Mr. Hafley, and then we'll go to Chief Price. Yeah, just you know, to get back to what Mark's question, this information that was provided, I had to ask Carol Ann to produce something for us. Mm -hmm. um, she couldn't, you know, there's nothing else for 2015. So what she was able to do is just pull up what we did in 2014. So a lot of this information is not accurate, what <clears throat> could be currently. Okay. And then to touch on a statement that Chief Whittington made about um, the businesses, uh, I remember in one of our meetings that, um, like Euclid is at 2.85, and we actually had a major company here, I believe, uh, that left and went to one of that resident was concerned about us having businesses leave. We had a business in Eastlake that left oh. and went to Euclid with that at 2.85, so. Okay. It wasn't that time. Chief Wright? A couple of things I just wanted to point out or reiterate. You know, we're not reinventing the wheel here. We're not uh, breaking new ground uh, with uh, some of the other cities listed on top of it. And again, this is after 10 years of the, the slow progression back. The, the reciprocity, you know, it's also the, the senior thing, I think, is always a big thing for all of us to, to look at someone on a fixed income who, who's older, who doesn't have any other means, and this doesn't affect them either. Um, Chief Whittington brought up about, you know, the other information that was out there, and I, if we can do something united, I, I truly feel there's a 20% of people that will vote for anything we put out there, 20% that will not vote for anything we put out there, and we got that other 60% that we have to work work with. 
But if someone's in a gray area and I'm selling it and Mr. Zern's selling it, Laura's selling it, and then all of a sudden they, they run into another council person or someone who works for the city, whether an employee, politician, whatever, and oh no, they don't need that. They're just, you know, that's a bunch of BS. That person, if they could get 20 people on the side that we need it, if one person is telling them otherwise, that's going to make them feel good that I could vote no for it because somebody from the city told me it's not necessary. So, you know, and it's my job at the police department, chief wedding time with the fire and so on, that we have to make sure we, we keep our employees focused and directed, but, you know, as a group of directors and, and council and mayor, I think we, we owe it to ourselves to do that too. As a, as a director and a resident, my, if my opinion means anything, I would go for the full rollback, try to pass a levy, and tell people we pass the levy, we're going to reduce the rollback by half. You know, give them an incentive-based thing to say, yeah, let's spread this out among that 50% of the people that don't live in the city. And by doing that, you're helping yourself. Just another uh, carrot, so to speak, to, uh, to add to the, uh, the pot. Mr. Clam. I'm sorry to keep jumping in because you got a law thing, so I was trying to catch everybody up. The last page of this, if you didn't know, the second to last page was this was the, the letter that Slocum had prepared and the mayor had fairly prepared. But you see where they describe the difference between the income tax and the real estate tax and the proposed income tax, residents with unearned income, social security, pension, disability, and employment. That's where the income tax approach or the rollback has the benefit of not affecting your senior population. Um, obviously, that's a precious population to the city of Eastlake, and it, sometimes it takes some explaining because they're frightened by it. But that, of course, is the main difference. You have the control of reciprocity because you don't need to go to vote, and you can protect the, the most vulnerable among us because it's not going to affect the majority of them because most of them are receiving their income by way of the pension. If I say something wrong, cash jump in. Um, but the other thing that you got to keep in mind is this doesn't happen overnight. I mean, this is... So if we delay, you know, we're talking another year and a half before you see the benefit from any of this stuff, because you'd have to make these changes. You're not going to get in for next year, this year. So you're talking filings for 2016 and 2017, and the income that comes in after that, basically. So, you know, we got to pull the trigger sooner. Mr. Pledge. Um, I, with all due respect to, and I know how hard both chiefs, everybody works. For the levies, and, and, I, and I, I will just, I don't really have faith that we're going to pass the levy. I just, I know we worked hard. I, I know the town hall meetings, you know, people went door to door. Um, we haven't passed the levy since 1982. And I would like to think that we could get information out there and let people know just how critical it is, but I, I, I really feel that we've all done that. For the last, at least for the last six years, and I think we're at, I think we're really at a crisis point if we don't make some sort of action here financially for the benefit of the city. I mean, Madison was talking about closing down their police department. Men around the lake wants to um, annex into Menor. Um, <coughs> these are the decisions that communities are looking at, and we're we're not even a stone's throw from that. I mean, I. We're just at that crisis point where we have to make a decision. Um, I know that I know the pros and cons of reciprocity, and you know, and this is for the new guys more than anybody else. But I, I, and we're still going to have to wait a year and a half for any money, which we may end up in the red by the end of this year. So it may not even benefit us this year. Um, the only thing I I, I think we should do a, a full. Um, Roll back on however you want to say it, a full rollback on the reciprocity, reciprocity that there shouldn't be any credit, that we should take that 2.6 million, whatever it's going to generate, and use it to fix our stations, fix our, bring our personnel back up to snuff so that people are safe on their jobs. So there maybe there is somebody here to answer a phone and back up things so that we can provide services to residents. And hey, you know, if we get back up on our feet, we can always, you know, rescind it or change it or reduce it, but we are in such a huge 
hole. And his chin is getting deeper and deeper. And it, 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 it literally, like the last six years, he just watches dig herself into holes. So, um, you know, the chief needs new ambulances. He needs new cruisers. These, these are, you know, we're talking hundreds of thousands of dollars. And it's not going to come from any place else. It's not. The chief it, answers his phone call, does his own scheduling. The mayor, if he gets a public records request, has to drop everything he's doing and dig through the files and take out staples and put them in the copy machine. The chief of police is doing traffic stops. The, the chief's doing traffic stops. <laughs> if, if a public records <laughs> request comes into the building department, everybody's got to stop what they're doing for a public records request. If you call up the city hall, nobody answers the phone because we don't have anybody. Mayor, what about chief? I guess, and I've said this again, staff, this is a two-edged sword. It's a loss regardless. I, I've, I've asked them, should we just go into fiscal and be done with it? And will the residents that now say, maybe they weren't full of shit? Crap, or whatever you want to say. Edit. Excuse that edit, but uh, again, <laughs> I mean, it, it's a loss either way. You reduce it, the residents are going to be upset that we shoved it down the throat. I have had this discussion with the chief. As, as the, instead of an incentive, it could be turned around. Well, they did this, now they're threatening us. Well, it's an insane. What they're saying is, okay, we're going to do this, but we'll take it away if you vote yes. So is it an incentive, or are they going to look at it as a threat? We go into fiscal emergency, we, it's a loss for everybody. I mean, it's just it's a loss for yeah. me as an administrator, uh, as us as a council, and to say, you know, we had no other answers. I do agree, we are healthier, and I'm trying to get some numbers for uh, the percentage, I know Mark Alliston and Wycliffe, of what we have uh, with our manufacturing and our retail, that, percentage that we have, uh, and I think it won't show as much. Again, I think we've talked in town halls, we need $52 million businesses to come in here. I don't even know if we have space for $52 million businesses. So, you know what, I, no one wants taxes, I don't want any more new taxes, but uh, you're going to see all the cities go into this, and, and that's what the fear with Ken has, and I talked to the, the new mayor of Willowick yesterday. Uh, we're all going to sit down and try to help him get through some things. But, you know, they're forecasting at the end of this year that they're going to only have $160,000 carryover. Uh, you know, Willie's healthy, Menor's healthy. Uh, Wycliffe's a couple years behind us. But, again, and, and we can sit here and, and argue the politics of what happened with the guy that wants to be our president, but in, in the long run, do the math, and it's $9 million, or almost $9 million we've lost since all the local government fund. The first energy that we lose a million dollars a year. I mean, we can add it up. I think the chief and I did it a couple days ago. It's like $4 million. 4.3. 4. Total of state cuts, first energy, other cuts. And that's just hard to recoup, $4 million in revenue. So, again, we work every day to try to get better. Again, I always speak from my heart. Eventually, the people that, that reside in this city that we serve need to buy in back into this city. And I'm not sure what that takes. And that, again, I'm not, I, I have always asked that question. Right? I mean, we've talked, we, we were point blank in these tunnels. Like, where does the gap exist? So if you're not buying into the city, no matter what you do or what we do as far as reciprocity or, or, or taxes or whatever the case may be, as long as people aren't buying back into the city, it, it, we're not going to have a good result. And, you know, back in, you know, 2010, we were at a, you know, a weekend meeting, and I remember being specific to say that eventually we're going to be put in a position where we're going to have to save the people of Eastlake from themselves. And I still stand behind that comment because I'm not sure people understand, you know, the whole global aspect of what's happened in this community. And again, you know, there's, there's little issues that, I, that get pointed out to us all the time from directors about this, that, or, or, or whatever the case may be, but... Now, I'll speak from the fire department. My mission and the mission that I carry out every day is not something I set up. It, the mission of the fire department is really dictated by the people that call 911. And if I'm not, if I don't have the capabilities, equipment, and personnel wise to meet those demands, then that's, that's an issue. Again, if I'm getting three or four squad calls at one time and I can't meet those demands, it really falls back on the residents. And I think that that's really the gap that exists to say, Again, you know, the mayor took a lot of heat 
last time in, uh, uh, when we put out the literature to say these were all threats. And I know that people took that and they spun it around. But the reality of the issue is, is this is your community. Now, again, we, we had levies fail from the city, but people in the city are now paying extra taxes. They're paying, you know, the Lakeland and, and Willoughby East Lake. The people that live here saw a major tax increase. Now, again, I don't see people standing in line leaving the city. I don't see people at this point having to eat cat food or whatever the case may be. So, again, when you hear the people say, we can't afford any more taxes, I understand what they're trying to get at. But we're, they're investing so much of their money into things outside of the city. You know, I've had people say, you know, we pay for your salary. You're exactly right. But you also pay for school teachers. You pay for Metro Parks Rangers. You pay for people that work at the public library. You pay for state senators. You pay for people that work in the House Representative. You pay for the governor. You pay for the state patrol. I have a list of people that as a taxpayer I pay their wages. And, and so I think that when, you, when, we, when I'm looking at this stuff, I think that, again, all of the stuff that affects you directly, you know, taking care of your people that are sick in your house, your house catching on fire, if you need a police department, if you need, you know, your streets plowed. I, I, and again, I think that that's where I'm at to say, you know, that's the focus. And I, I, I don't know. I don't know. It's frustrating a little bit for me. Mr. Zerg. Um, I just wanted to make that comment. I, I see the city's financial woes, uh, absolutely. And I think we need to do something about it. But reciprocity is, uh, in, a, in a levy increase, are two different things. I mean, you have one where there's no vote of the public, which I think is a complete loss of, loss of trust. And I think you have a levy, which can be done. I mean, there were two, and one was a gigantic levy through the school system, which I know it wasn't passed by all the precincts in East Lake, but that was a massive tax increase, and I think it was done really well. It was, they had, they had a, a large amount of people that, you know, fought to get that passed, and they put effort in it, and they put time in it, and there were signs, and, and they had children involved and everything to get that to pass, and you know, I, I, I guess just getting down to who you are, who I am, you know, I mean, a vote of the public is, is really what's needed, you know, just to, just to raise the taxes and then come back and, you know, one, you know, Mayor Morley was talking about a threat, you know, that we'll lower them if, if you pass it. I, I don't think that's the way to go at all, because there's no trust. And I think if, if we all make an effort to try to do a levy, that that would be the, I don't want to wave a flag and say the American way to do it, but it is. It's a vote of, it's a vote of the public. Mr. Pledge, then we'll go to you. Um, I shall pass. Hmm? I'll pass. Chief Wright. The flag I'm worried about is a white one. You know, that's what we're going to be waving here real <clears throat> soon. And we, we've done all these things, and, you know, the, the personnel that... How will be so I got that? I mean, the fire chief and I were probably more on the odds that it wasn't going to pass. It was, it was really close. I'm glad it did pass. I voted for it myself. But the, to not, all that does I think is prolong our. It doesn't feel like there's a good feeling here that we get it passed. And, and the the plan is the reciprocity. And that was, again, that was my suggestion, just as far as something else to, to throw at people if, you know, if we want to spread this out among more individuals, you know, to, for the people working inside the city with the income tax. Um, you know, it's not, we're not creating a new process. We're not, we're not reinventing the Constitution. We're not doing anything other than what other cities around us are, have, and are going to be doing, and we're in much worse shape than a lot of those cities are. So I, I again, I, I just think it's it's something that has to be considered. Mr. Pledge. I'm just gonna say, there isn't a popular answer to this dilemma. You know, we, if we were to put it to a levy, which we have tried several times, and it's always been defeated. And as the mayor said, the school levy, the Lakeland levy, they even failed in East Lake. Um, but then we're, we will go into fiscal emergency because, as they told us the, two years ago when we had the levy on the ballot and we talked about reciprocity, there's this big uproar. Like, how do you take that power away from the people? 
And so nobody wanted to do it. But the fact of the matter is, is that we're not generating any revenue. And if we put this on a ballot again and it fails, then we're going to have that whole uproar again about reciprocity and how dare you do that. And But the fact of the matter is that the chief is absolutely, chief Reich is absolutely right. We can do this. We're allowed to do this. If other communities are doing this, it's how they are saving <coughs> themselves. And I go back to, I think Chief Whittington said it at one of the meetings. He goes, you know, sometimes, you know, we are, we're appointed to oversee the city and to make decisions in the best interest of the city. Not popular decisions, not decisions that get us reelected, but difficult decisions that are going to be unpopular and they're going to make people unhappy sometime so that this city can thrive. We are dying. I mean, we're just dying. So, um, and I think what Chief Whittington said, we're like the parents. And sometimes you have to make decisions that the children don't like. And I know that puts it in, in a very simplistic term, but that's how I see us as the leaders in this community. And it's not going to be, you know, and, and if we decide to go for a levy, I will be out there, I will be going door to door, I will do everything I can to make sure that it passes. But I, I just don't see it working. And I see us a year and a half down the road having the same conversations and just being deeper in the hole. Well, Losing more quality employees. You have to hustle to get on in November if it's possible. I don't know. Then you're talking. And if we have to have special meetings in the summer. So. Okay. One thing I want to correct. Everybody's throwing out the word fiscal emergency. Okay. This would come from the state. Before we go into fiscal emergency, we would go under fiscal watch. Under fiscal watch, the board would be formed, same as we did last year. Okay. There is a difference there. Be cautious in using the word fiscal emergency because we're not there. We're not going to be there. You have to go to fiscal watch first. Mayor? I agree with that statement. What I'm saying is we can get there. So let me rephrase that. I'm not saying we're going into fiscal emergency. I'm not saying we're in fiscal watch. It's something that can happen, and it's something <clears throat> that, as the chief say, we're a couple items away from. I mean, we're having, again, we're showing a 200 and $80,000 carryover. You know, the uh, the state likes to have a 20%. I mean, we're not even close to 20%. So, Chief. So. You know, I, I appreciate Mr. Zurn's you know, opinion on it. I think that we all like that. The question I would bring up as, as, as a whole, though, the fact that we failed the last 12, I wonder if I mean, there's already a trust issue that exists. And I think that that is something that you get feedback from. And again, I, I don't want to completely point, but I think that a lot of feedback we get and a lot of comments that get made up is, is regarding the stadium and, and, and the issues that the stadium has. And again, really honestly and truly, sometimes when you talk to people about the stadium, the information that they rely heavily on and, they, and it affects the way that they pull that lever really is misleading information. The things that they feel about the stadium or that, and, that, and that type of thing. So... I really, again, as, and, and I, I think that you know, Mr. Zerd here hit on something you know, we, the, that I wanted to be able to reinforce is that we need people to buy into the city. You know, that's really the best resolve. But again, I almost wonder, you know, just based on the fact of, uh, of our history, if, if there's already a trust issue that exists. And then I think Kath can chime in, but I remember about the reciprocity. You know, reciprocity credits existed. Because people, they, you know, the government doesn't want government entities to hoard money. So there was a time in most cities where, when they're healthy, that credit's given so that there's not money just sitting around. And I think that when, you know, we're laying people off, and a lot of them come to the podium to start talking about, the, you know, the, you know, their, their potential to get laid off. The, the question that came up several times was, is that, you know, when does a city start hurting enough to say we're not hoarding money anymore, and that credit that we give people really needs to be taken back to the city where it exists. I mean, that's the law. Legally, we have a right to that money. But again, because of the way that reciprocity was set up to help you know, keep money from being you know, just stockpiled. So again, those are some of the things, you know, the, the, just to, you know, as we continue this thought process to say, I mean, I, mean, I don't know. Um, my question would be to finance. Correct me if I'm wrong. The only people that have to have a vote of the people to pass a tax increase are the cities and the municipalities. State does not, and neither do the federal. Is that correct? I believe so, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I would have to get back to you. Yeah. Right. They can raise your taxes anytime they want. 
without a vote of the people. The city, I do believe, are the only ones that have to have a vote. I know the city requires the vote. I'm just not sure about the state. <coughs> Mr. Hayford. I just want to make sure that everybody's aware, for the record, that if we did a tax increase and went out to the ballot, I would be supporting that 100%. But I'm fully, you know, after seeing how many levies have failed over and over and over again, even a recreation levy that failed, that was the average resident would pay about $1.25 a month. That was shot down. I'm fully in support of reducing the reciprocity credit to whatever it takes to keep this city running solid. Um, I'm fully in support of that, um, and I have no problem with that. Because I was, an, as an elected official, we were put in here to protect this city. If that's what we have to do, that's my that's where I would go on it. Any other comments? Any other questions? New guys? Anybody? Anybody? No. Oh. Jason, if we pass something soon, when would it take effect? Would it take effect for the? 2016 taxes, the 2017 taxes. And, you know, I'd have to give it some thought. I mean, my inclination, if I had an answer now, where you're talking, it would be for dialing year 2017. 2017. But we do collect at the source, so there's and some possibility. But and there's Mr. Pledge. I knew it. Did. <laughs> and there's something to be said. Once you pass it and those funds become available, we can start using it. We know it's coming. I remember Slocum saying something yeah. about that last year. Once that money is in the pipeline, it's going to be coming in the pipeline, it gives you that um, that breathing room that we need. Does that make sense? You know, it's like you're going to get, you know, $200,000 next month, so you can go sign a contract for a house this month because we know that money's coming down. That kind of concept, but on a much bigger scale. So. I have a question. Um, does it make a difference? Say we try to pass a levy. Um, would it make a difference as far as when we could implement a reciprocity change if we tried to pass a levy and it failed, and then we did it, say, like at the end of the year? Would that make a difference? We can pass a reciprocity at any time it would be an emergency by council. But we couldn't go on until November unless you want to pay for a special election. Well, that's that would be the levy. For the yes. levy, yeah, yeah. Okay. Chief? But I think that would really look that's the retribution aspect i think me and uh, chief whittington talked before the last levy that if we could have played that whole year again that would have been the safer play so the retribution thing was not an argument a valid argument that we're doing this because this is what needs to be done our only <coughs> other options down the road is to get something passed if something and I mean, Chief Whittington's analogy in the, the history of the, the, the state stockpiling or the government stockpiling the money it is a good one that, you know, when it isn't needed, it can be given back. But, you know, we have the county holding more money and charging more. We have the state holding tons of money and charging more. And we have nowhere else to go. So it, the residents, I always like when when you hear somebody, whether it's social media or wherever, talking about we need to get more businesses. We want we want Home Depot, just for instance, to come and invest their money into the city, the same city that own residents aren't investing in. You know, so as a as a 20 year resident, who will, if you know one that will never vote for a levy. You're asking a corporation to invest into a place with households that aren't investing in their own community. And I, I think that's the, the tough part right now. Mr. Zern. Um, yeah, I would, I, I just wanted to say I would love it if uh, everybody uh, on, in the council got the information on, on a levy and the process of a levy and when that could be placed on the ballot. And I just had a general question. I'm sure this has been brought up before, before the new council people. Um, but as for the equity position in the stadium, does anyone know what that appraised value is or what, what value that, uh, that, uh, that is? There was never any equity in the stadium. There was, we could never find a buyer for it, and I don't remember the numbers, but it was something that we talked about before, if we could sell it, um, 
if it was just there wasn't even a viable option. Okay. But the payoff right now is twelve million dollars to pay it off. The issue will be, and we discussed this many times. We put it up for sale. Whoever would buy it takes over the captain's lease and contract. There's where the issue comes. And just a quick for new people, people on the crowd. When people complain about the captains, I don't know how many people know this. When the stadium was being built, the original team backed out. So when the captains came in, obviously they held all the cards of getting anything that they needed for their business. So the captains, the stadium was actually being built without a team. So with the captains not being here, it could be worse than it is now. So total debt, stadium $35 million. We owe $12 million in debt. We've already paid for $20 million, I believe. But we total debt was $42 million. What's our debt service every year? $1.3 million. So I'm reading. And, and we bring about eight fifty five. We could pull in about 400000 from the camp. So fundamentally, from a standpoint of it being an income-producing property, which is the only thing it can be, it, it doesn't make money every year to the tune of a loss in approximately $500,000. I mean, but here's what's going to happen. So it, the only way something would happen, I hit the lottery. I come in and say I'm going to buy the team. I'm going to pay $13 million off, and I'm going to charge the captains. That's how I'm going to make money. But... For someone to come in and say, hey, I'm going to give $13 million to a minor league team. I mean, I, I've said it before. We want to throw it up for sale, we'll throw it up for sale. But we're not going to get any buyers. If you're a businessman, you're not purchasing. Jeez. And again, at the end of this term, 2031, 2026, when the captain's lease is up, the people in power at that time are going to have to think about, what do we do now? The stadium's paid off, but now we need a new stadium because it's falling apart. And, right now. With, and, and those numbers are with Mike Slocum and the mayor doing some awesome strategic thinking with calling those bonds and doing all that stuff. I mean, all this, these conversations we've had over the years, it was all figured into where we're at now to put us in the best possible position, frankly. You know? Chief Whitting. You know, I almost wonder if, you know, as we progress through this, we, I think when we look at that stadium, we look at that as almost like a third party type of thing. And really, the, in essence, the stadium is no different than City Hall, police station, fire station, or, or service department garage. It's, it's a government, I mean, it's a city building that we own. And I think that, you know, to, to, to look at avenues to be able to use it, it's no different. I mean, you know, you wouldn't want to, you know, there's, no, there's really not a viable option to solve the fire station or whatever the case may be. So I think that that building, as much as, you know, as it's set up to be, you know, some, some, you know, an event place, I guess, for lack of a better term, it's really just a city building. It's no different than any other city building that we have on property. Mr. Hayden? Okay. Just okay. keep telling myself I'm not going to call anymore. But. <laughs> <laughs> just one thing, I would kind of want to make it clear and put it on the record that in the event that we put a levy on or in the event that we, um, went with some sort of modifications to reciprocity, it would not be in any way, shape, or form a punishment to the residents or any type of retribution in any way, shape, or form. It is, it is just a matter of survival and keeping our safety forces safe and managing our properties. I mean, we can't even uh, manage or maintain our property. So um, I think it's very, very clear it isn't you know, about punishing anybody um, in any way, shape, or form. So. Again, I guess in my mind, I don't see any difference between the school board putting on the levy that they do. I mean, they're doing, there's, these levies represent, you know, progression and, and, and development, and they, they represent you know, stabilization. That's what these levies represent. That's all it solely represents. We're going after levies, or we're trying to, you know, whatever we are trying to generate revenues is solely a, a purpose to preserve this community. And, 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 and for anybody to think anything else, I think it was very short-sighted, you know, and I, and I, I know I appreciate what, what Laura's saying, but again, I think that this is part of that community buy-in to say, again, you know, you have, a, you have levies on a ballot all the time, and, and if you talk to the people who are putting this on, you know, if the school board members were here and the superintendent was here, they would pretty much give you a reason why that that levy was valid, you know, valuable to them. As a, and it, was, and it all is based on improving them. It's improving buildings. It's improving the ability to draw families in. So our levies really just represent... Our abilities to stabilize this community. And they don't have income tax or reciprocity. I guarantee you they would roll the reciprocity back <laughs> if they had it. That's what they would have done because they're stewards. You know, and that's, they don't, but they have one choice, and that's a levy. They don't have other choices. Anybody else?
Okay, seeing none. Uh, I'm not even going to pull the committee because there is no decision being made as to whether to move anything forward or not. It'll be held here in committee, whatever it is. Be the further discussions, uh, working with the administration, finance, and stuff. Uh, brings us into miscellaneous. There's nothing under miscellaneous. Uh, we'll move into recognition of the public, half hour, three minutes per person. Remind the speakers that uh, all comments must be directed towards the chair. Is there anybody wishing to speak? Name and address? Angelo Trevisano, 34186 Waldmer Drive. Um, this question is to the chiefs. What exactly, because uh, it seems like a lot of the, you're driving a lot of the discussion. All comments and Sorry. questions come to the chair. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My question, if the chiefs would care to answer or provide some additional input, is what exactly is being asked for? And is there a dollar amount? I hear potentially I, levies or reciprocity. Is there a figure? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Chief Whittington, I'll let you go. So I'm, I'm comfortable talking to you. So, so really what, as, as, as things have progressed, and I think that, you know, for me being in this job eight years and, and, and really essentially being in the, in the city for 18, I've really seen the progression. So the one thing and the one concern, you know, that really came about when we were having discussions <coughs> were, you know, during budget hearings and in some other events that we've had, we really tried to express our needs internally about what, what needed to be done. And I, I am at the point now where I'm making decisions based on what I think needs to be done over there. And I think that I'm looking for direction outside to say, I need an ambulance. I need a rescue squad. I needed it yesterday. So I have two rescue squads that are about 13 years old that I continue to rebuild motors on. And is that the direction? So what I, well, I think when we talked, our goal tonight was to sit down as a group to see what direction we were moving on. Is, is, is the feeling of the group to look at reciprocity, is the feeling of the group to move towards levies, is the feeling of the group for us to continue to try to maintain where we're at. Because again, we get a lot of questions internally, you know, again, and so, so to be honest with you, our, our comments tonight was basically trying to feel out what direction that we're moving into the city next. So again, that, that was part of the dialogue that we were trying to have. I don't have a number in my head I most certainly think that that's well above you know my pay grade and about above my decision making, um, as far as the levy goes. Um, you know, as far as the reciprocity credit, again, that would be something that would be well above any decision that I could possibly make, other than giving some kind of an input. So I wasn't looking for specifics on say we needed this much of a levy. You know, I think that if, if we if we did approach a levy, I think that you know would be the most beneficial thing to do would be for the directors and the mayor to sit down and put together a list of things that we need, we need to accomplish off of a levy so that when we did go to ask the residents, we weren't selling ourselves short. Because that's a fear of mine is, is that we do go put a levy out, and then when we get that levy pushed out, and let's say that by a miracle we pass it, and then we end up short, you know, that's going to look really silly from our perspective to say, well, again, we passed that levy. And, and, we, and I've seen that happen around us. That's all in this city, but other cities where they put a levy out, and then, you know, then all of a sudden, you know, we don't have enough. You know, we need to get some more. So I, I hope I answered I'm not, I don't think I have a definitive thing. I, I think that for us, we really wanted to sit down with the group, take advantage of the, you know, of, of the time of year. I know there's new membership to see. We really are now looking for direction. We want to be part of that direction. We want to be part of the problem solving. But we didn't have an idea. You know, when we talked to say, you know, as, 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 you know we worked through the mayor, but again, from the elective and, and the constituents, I mean, these people represent you guys. So is it okay if when I put a bill in for seven thousand dollars for the same rescue squad every other year to re rebuild a motor? Is that the direction you want me to take it in? And I think that that was some. I use it as a broad generalization kind of a comment. There's several things that I that I, that I stack up. So I'm just looking for guidance more than I am anything. So I don't think that answers or clarifies or anything. Any other questions? Anybody other wishing to speak? I had one additional question. Um, I'm not sure if this is legally possible, but has any, and I'm sure it's been discussed in the past, so maybe you can just provide an update, is there any possibility of a service-specific levy? I'll, I'll try to answer that the best I can. We have done them in the past, and they've all failed. All of them. We tried police and fire, we tried service, we even tried recreation at $1.26 per month and they've all failed. Uh, is there a possibility of those in the future? That would have to be gone through with the administration. 
the directors and council finance committee and be further discussed at that time. Mayor. I think what we've discussed, and he's going to probably say it, uh, what the chief doesn't like about us going for separate. So if we get, say we get a two mil levy for police, <coughs> we're just going to fire, we're going to take it, we're not going to give them that money on the general fund. So for them to get something passed in any of the separate entities, we need to find a cost that, say, it's $5 million to run a department, we need to generate $5 million for them. Because if not, if the two mil gives them uh, $2 million, we're going to take $2 million away from them out of the general fund, and it basically doesn't help them at all. Yeah, and, and just to reiterate that, and again, in fairness, you know, if I pass a levy for the fire department and I start seeing more ge money ge or generated revenues coming in, you know, and then you know, Chief Wright needs something or Nick needs something. You know, I would think they'd be remiss if it, you know, if the mayor didn't say, "Well, you, you got that levy." So it's really it's a shell game when you start breaking out levies. It, it, that's all that represents is that shell game. And, and we we actually have done that here in the past, where we've you know, there's been sp site specific money set aside for something, and then you know, when it comes time for it, I get the money. You know, like ambulance billing. The ambulance billing is strictly dedicated to the fire department, but he also took five hundred thousand out of my general fund account. So all I really did was I shuffled the line items. And so instead of having a general fund line item, now I have a separate line item. So it really, again, and, and, and to be honest with you, I, I really track we failed, the fire department failed. And, I, and, and that's the kind of the, the mentality that scares me because, again, not to say that I'm special or that, you know, but if you look at historically the levies that pass in the city, you know, most time fire department levies have no problem passing. You know, when you see those things, now again, it's not to say that they all pass. And again, I was the closest out of the three, but I failed, you know, and I'm not sure that, you know, that that, that represents anything to, to a lot of people in the city to say, you know, that, that somehow that I, you know, that we get something more special, so I don't know. If you archive, because I know you like doing that, go on to the Lake County Board of Elections and just go through all the levies that we've put, and you'll see that they've, everything has been tried, the separates, the, because people say, well, we don't want to give you a general fund, because it's a slush fund. So we say, okay, we're going to separate them out. And they've been, I mean, this over the, probably the last 10, 12 years of trying for the levies. I mean, it's like, to the point, you know, the reason we did the income tax the last time was because the seniors were saying, I'm on fixed income. <coughs> okay, so we're going to go against that. And then you had, again, some people out there saying some stuff to the seniors. And then after the levy failed, especially the calls I got, well, I said, well, what was it going to cost you? Well, I, that's not what I heard. Well, instead of waiting until after you vote, call beforehand. I mean, we're, we did all the town hall. We've done everything. And again, we're at what do our residents want? The other problem is any levy we pass is just to self-preserve. It's not the schools got to say, hey, we're building two new schools. You're going to see what's going on. What we're saying is we're passing levies to survive. It's not going to say, hey, we're going to be able to open up a park or we're going to be able to put a pool back at Surfside, or we're going to be able to have recreation department. We're doing to survive to get some employees back to keep up average services. That's part of the problem. I mean, we had a light winter, but again, the couple snowfalls we get, we get the calls and we're getting yelled at. We had five plows for a whole city. And again, we don't complain and say, hey, you know, we should have did this. We're going to get there when we can get there. And again, I don't know if people have seen anything change except for, and I'll say this again, you guys, everyone's upset with me, continue three going in, in the third year about we're not picking up leaves off the, the vacuum in the leaves. Out of everything we've cut, that's the still the thorn in everyone's side. So, I mean, priorities we have to, they don't worry maybe that they're not, again, we're not getting a third ambulance. We're not having the police. And I've told them, and, and I know they'll not do this, to have their employees go into harm's way. I mean, the fire we just had was intense, and you know we had ten departments at this, the fire that was just here on Easter Sunday. You know, I don't want any of these guys to get injured. I I don't ever look forward to that phone call from him, from him, that says one of our guys are down. I don't ever want that phone call, and I've told them, especially them, going in these volatile situations, they don't have backup. You just wait. Go in there later when he has to pick them up. Anybody else wishing to speak or ask? No. Yeah, I, got the chief's back. We've gone into that part. Yeah. 
Um, Mr. Fletch. I know it's your meeting, but I'm not entirely comfortable leaving this just out there on the table. I'm not really sure what you meant by it, but I want to make sure that, um, Randy, are you going to get Mr. Zuron the levy process of how that happens or how the transfer? Yeah, Can you do that? I'll send okay. Email. I want to make, because I want everybody to see, Jason and John, and obviously Dave, if they want to see how that works and what we have to go through the steps and the timing. I think that's important for them. And I would like for us to be able to revisit this again. Um, if it is going to be a levy, we'd have to move it pretty quickly. And if we're going to do reciprocity, then that's something that we need to look at. But I, I don't just want to have this meeting and just kind of table it and let all these conversations go by the wayside, or, or let us just think that you know something's going to happen. Okay. But until the finance, hmm? until the chair of the finance has a chance to sit down okay. with the administration, the chiefs, okay. and the directors. Okay. It's not going to go anywhere. Okay, well, there, there's no a, decision to be okay. made. Well, then that's another step of yeah, that right, can happen. But there's no decision to but be I made. I just don't want the ball to stop here. I don't want it to drop here. Okay. That's not what we said. We said okay. we'd meet with them and move off okay. from there. All right, well, so. that's fine. Okay, no problem. Okay. All right. Any other comments? If not, this meeting's adjourned at 733.